If I had nothing. That's supposed to be a cooler effect, but like that rack's really heavy and it took me a long time to set all this stuff up. So you can just ignore me slowly putting it back together between clips. But I do remember when we had nothing. So here's what I'd buy and in what order. But there's a lot of right answers here. And I'm not saying you have to purchase in this exact sequence. I don't know your training goals, space, or budget. And the reality is you could build your home gym in a million different ways and we'd all be happy. And that's the beauty of a home gym. It's your space. This is just how I'd do it if I did it all again. Now, home gyms aren't cheap. That's not to say they have to be expensive, but they're an investment in you and your family. And for many of us, they become a hobby or maybe in my case, an obsession. But as you grow your space and its capabilities, the cost and your wants might grow with it. We built this as a place for Winnie and I to work out because we live in the middle of nowhere and driving back and forth to the gym wasn't an option. So like most others, we started small and designated a little bit of space for the gym. And well, here we are a few years later and nobody actually parks in here. It's not that we can't. Every once in a while, we'll drive in here for some clout on the gram, but realistically, it's just a gym now. And sure, our situation is unique, but I'm constantly marveling over our followers' home gym setups. And we all started in the same place, right? Now this isn't a budget gym build video per se, though we do have a ton of those, so I'll mention a few as we go. And as is customary, for each item we discuss, I'll give you a few options and I'll link them all in the description. That way you can decide the best way to go about building your home gym. And to be clear, it doesn't have to be done all at once. It is perfectly fine to slowly bankrupt your family. So what I would do if I wasn't sure a home gym was for me, is ignore all the items I'm about to tell you and start with smaller items that aren't big investments financially and don't take up a lot of space. That way you can see if a home gym is really for you. Because regardless of what those fancy influencers tell you, and we will tell you a lot of things to make money, home gyms aren't for everyone. So get yourself some bands. They're cheap and there's a ton of good resources out there for band only workouts and exercises. Now, I'm not saying those physiques were created entirely from bands, far from it, but you can accomplish a lot of movements with them and every home gym needs some anyway. I've got pairs from Rogue and cheap sets off Amazon and after a few years of use, I can hardly tell the difference. So what I would do is get a set or two from Canway, which is who I often recommend, but feel free to check out Rogue as well because they do have a larger selection and prettier colors, so you might as well look good while you check yourself out in the mirror as you work out alone. From there, in a classic Glock move nobody saw coming, I'd get gymnastic rings. And if you don't want to listen to me say this again, you can skip forward a little bit, but please, not really. I need the help on the algorithm. And in all seriousness, they're an incredibly versatile item that anybody can incorporate into their workouts. I've had issues in the past with my shoulders and I wasn't able to do pull-ups or dips without pain. Which is almost entertaining since I own the world's most expensive dip attachment, but with rings, since you're able to move freely, I was able to work through that. And I credit those rings as a big part of the reason I no longer have shoulder issues. They've also helped Winnie obtain her first pull-up and we use them for a lot of different movements in our programming. Of course, you can keep adding small budget items like the speed rope we use from Wad Nation, but I misplaced it and haven't put any real effort into finding it, so I'm not sure how much weight my advice holds there. And I am in no way suggesting that a few small budget pieces of equipment are gonna hold your interest long term when working out at home. But they are a great way to test the waters without wasting money because you'll keep using this equipment even after you join the addiction that is building your home gym. The first thing I would get, once I was fairly certain this was for me, would probably be a barbell. But let me know in the comments what order you'd get things in if you had to buy them one thing at a time. Now, technically, I probably use my dumbbells almost as much. But me telling you the first thing you should buy is a set of dumbbells or even adjustable dumbbells is a bit extreme because neither option is particularly cheap, though neither is a barbell and plates. But for me anyway, a barbell is the foundation of the vast majority of my workouts. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting you're gonna be getting a bunch of full workouts in with just a barbell, though there are clever people out there that have created content on just that. And it's a pretty good way of getting used to the movements without having to look cool for the gram. 
But eventually you will need some plates, which combined with your bar will add a lot of options to your workout. And ultimately variety is what you'll need to keep your home gym workouts interesting and keep you progressing. So which bar? Because to be completely honest with you, and as offensive as this is to say in the home gym community, you can get away with just using one barbell for all of your lifts. That doesn't mean you won't upgrade and expand your possibilities later as you begin playing the game of how many packages can I sneak into my home gym before my wife notices. But personally, I could easily pick one barbell off this wall and use it for everything. And for me, that would be the Rogue Ohio Power Bar. But it's not particularly cheap as you're not getting one to your door for under $320. Unless you find one in the boneyard, but they're not particularly easy to find there. And the other issue with that bar is it's a power bar and not everybody lifts like me. If you want my top choice, that's the complete opposite of that. So an extreme budget bar that's a multi-purpose bar, that's an easy one. I'd pick up the Titan Economy Olympic Barbell which in my opinion is the best bar out there at the near $100 level. Is it perfect? No, but I don't want to be too harsh on Titan because I know they're watching and it's not that I'm scared, I am, but there's always a few lurkers in the comments that defend these corporations like they own them. And the last time I was honest with Titan, I got some heat in my Titan series safety squat bar review. Sure, my sarcasm, skepticism, and sense of humor can be a bit much, ask Winnie, but you have to realize I make a lot less money by being critical in these reviews, and the only incentive for me to do so is for my viewers' sake. But this bar is one I consistently recommend in budget videos, and it's great for the price. Once you've got a barbell, you'll need plates, because even without a rack, which we will cover in a minute, it'll add a ton of variety to what you can do at home. Your choices basically come down to iron or bumpers. And to be honest with you, most reputable companies have good options. So while I really enjoyed my rep plates, I also recommend fringe sport bumpers a lot as well. And of course, Rogue has great options. So between the three, it's hard to choose wrong. Now that's not to say there aren't other great options out there, but we've covered Olympic weight plates again and again in our Building a Home Gym series. So if you wanna to listen to my beautiful voice for the next six hours, feel free to check those out, which I've linked in the description. As for what I'd get next, I'd probably get a rack with the caveat that I'd try to get a bench soon after or at the same time. And this is also where I admit, but don't you dare quote me on this, that we don't actually all need premium equipment. Because to be honest, a lot of budget equipment works just as well as the shiny stuff I've got here. I won't go in depth in this video because we've already done so in our Power Rack Buyer's Guide. But again, this is where I'd go to one of the big three, Titan, Rep, or Rogue, and probably in that order of quality and price. Though I have to admit, Rep and even Titan have been closing that gap some over the years. Between the three of them, you've got a ton of options, and they all make pretty good racks. Whether it's the X3 or the Titan series, the PR4000 or PR5000, or the Rogue Monster or Monster Lightline. You really can't choose wrong, and that's just their 3 by 3 racks, which is what I'd recommend if you can afford the price. And that's because they're easier to expand off of, and it's also what companies support first and foremost. But if that price is too high, and I understand that, there are a ton of other recommendations in that Power Rack Buyer's Guide. When it comes to benches, as much as it pains me to say this, you only need one, and that's a good adjustable bench. As for which one? It really depends on your budget level, but chances are it'll come from Rep Fitness. They have and have had the home gym bench game on lockdown for years, and I'm pretty sure that's not gonna change anytime soon, so let's keep it simple. For your budget adjustable bench, it's probably gonna be the AB3100. At $270 shipped, it's a solid and dependable bench, and you should easily get years out of it. But if that's not enough for you, I'd upgrade to the AB4100, which is our most used adjustable bench here. And if that doesn't sound like an accomplishment, it is. I can't imagine another person owning more benches than me, which isn't an accomplishment. It's a sickness. Of course, if neither of those benches appeal to you, I can always plug yet another video and tell you to check out our guide on buying weight benches, in which I'll plug even more videos. It's an endless loop, really, kind of like my and soon to be your home gym purchases. 
That leaves us with the last home gym essential item, dumbbells. And if it weren't for the price, I'd probably buy these much earlier or do like I did and slowly acquire them. Unfortunately, depending how you build yours out, it could also be your most expensive piece. Because my set of dumbbells from five to 100 pounds cost me close to $4,000, which makes it the most I've spent on something in my gym. Now there are cheaper ways to do it, which we'll talk about in a second, but if you're set on fixed dumbbells, I personally find reps to be better than rogues. And they're also cheaper, and most other companies are essentially selling the same thing rogue is. If you don't have the space or can't justify the price, there's a lot of good adjustable dumbbells out there, but I can't say my recommendations have changed much lately. While I like newer bells because they resemble actual dumbbells, they're also quick to change, but they've got a good amount of plastic in them, which means they have all of the features that worry me with adjustable dumbbells. More parts means more problems and durability in the long term. I've also beat on Power Block Elites quite a bit. And while they still have a lot of parts, and I don't really want to get into how you have to make sure you're inserting the selector into the right hole, they're at least one of the more durable options out there, which resolves one of my issues with adjustable dumbbells. Now, when it comes to the elites, there are two versions of them, which can make choosing one a little bit confusing. You've got the American version, which is made in the US, and it has the manual locking mechanism for the adder weights and the straight handle. Then there's the EXP version, which is made in China, with the contoured handle and auto mechanism for the adder weights. If it sounds a little confusing, it can be at first, and it's another issue I have with adjustable dumbbells. I like it hard and fast when I'm in the gym and don't always enjoy fiddling around before the action starts. Otherwise, they're still blocky and take some getting used to, but a lot of people like them. Of course, you don't want to neglect your flooring, HVAC, lighting, collars, storage options, cardio, specialty bars, and so much more. Believe me, there's enough stuff for me to convince you to buy that you could be paying my kids college tuition, which is very generous of you. If you enjoyed this video, check out this playlist right here on building your home gym. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.